Coco was smiling in the pre-match interview, excited for what was to come in New York City. Taking on the world's rank 114th, the veteran, Laura Sigmund, who found her way in the big dance after qualifiers, taking out Baranciaco, Walter, and Ocean Dodden. Now she would have a first time matchup with Corey Coco Golf. Things got a little chippy quick as Laura stormed out to a first set lead. She won the first set 6-3 breaking Coco, showing her power, aggressiveness, and good two-way play, drop shotting Coco whenever she had the opportunity. But then things got really bad as Coco stormed back. Laura could not take it. Things quickly got bad as Laura continued to drag out each point. That's right, if you missed the match, Laura Sigmund was walking to get her towel literally every other play. And listen guys, holding up the serve of Coco's when Coco lost it. On her own serve, Laura Sigmund was going over the service clock several times. How about five, six times? And of course on the second serve, there's no service clock. So she was abusing that as well. The problem here was the chair umpire did not say anything. Whoa. Please have mercy. Laura begged the chair umpire for mercy, stating the other chair umpires were pretty lenient when it came to letting the players go over their service clock. Now the rules of the game state play is based on the speed of the server. However, the service clock is to enforce a timely match that gives each opponent a fair shot at gaining form, rhythm, and momentum. Now, when you're going over the service clock continuously five, six, seven times, the chair umpire needs to step in. Most chair umpires will give a warning after the first time. This chair umpire here didn't do her job too good. Most chair umpires won't have this issue because they do enforce a service clock instantly. The server violates it. Now the problem Laura possibly got upset is because the chair umpire was not enforcing the rule. So when she finally did, after Coco had to speak up and tell her about it, Laura then got frustrated. But here's the real problem. Anyone that watches tennis knows Laura does this every match. So this chair umpire was in the wrong. Mike Tyson was on hand and he watched Coco deliver the knockout blow as she would come storming back in the second and the third set. And Coco proved to be too much for Laura. That's right, too fast, too strong, too good. Seven aces for Coco in this one, winning 64% of her first serves to 57% for Laura. Coco won 58% of the second serve and had 14 breakpoint opportunities. In the post-match interview, she was asked, how was the match? Coco said, slow. Coco's coaches said she should have spoke up sooner, but it was good to see Coco defend herself and fight for what was right. Everyone across the world agreed with Coco. She was right in this case. Next up, in round two, she would face the future of Russian tennis, 16-year-old Mira Andreva. Started the season ranked 500, she's now 57 on the world tour, and she's hot, taking out three current or former top 20 players this year alone. Mira Andreva faced Coco Golf at the French Open in what was an amazing match. Mira would win the first set, but ladies and gentlemen, Mira said it herself, practicing with Coco was very difficult because Coco's too fast. Mira started this match by breaking Coco. That's right, she was up to love and Coco had to fight back. Mira would only win three more service games after that initial break. Coco Golf got the job done in straight sets, 6-3, 6-2. 
Coco got the victory by winning 81% of her first serves and winning 60% of Mira's second serves. Four for five on breakpoint opportunities. After getting that initial break, Mira would not even sniff another breakpoint the rest of the match. Corey Coco Golf dominated the teenager and she would spring herself into the round of 32. Coco wouldn't have long to smile because next up was Elise Mertens from Belgium. The former world's ranked number 12, former US Open semi-finalist. She's got seven singles titles and 11 doubles championships with several double slam titles. Very experienced, a great two-way player, great at defending, a great serve and volley player, and she has angles that can mathematically confuse any opponent. Corey Coco Golf found herself down early in this matchup and she was running out of time as she was broken to start the second set. Elise Mertens did it all behind winning 75% plus of her first serves in the first and second set. But Corey Coco Golf would have to find herself a miracle to come back in this one. Coco was playing the lines while Elise Mertens was keeping the ball in play, playing simple tennis, winning the net exchanges. And you know the old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Coco found herself down a break in the second set, already down a set, and she would go to her athletic ability. The most athletic player on tour by far. And she would move Elise Mertens front, back, side to side like a new TikTok dance move or something. Elise Mertens had no answer and Elise soon found herself with heavy legs. And Coco would turn this match around, scoring at will. Coco would finish the match with six aces, winning 70% of her first serves. She did lose 59% of her second serves, but the six for 11 on break points barely got her past Elise Mertens. Well, at least for the second set, because the third set Coco handed out a bagel. Elise had no legs and she couldn't do anything to stop Coco. Next up, she found herself in a battle with the world's former number one, Australian Open Grand Slam champion, over 30 championships, and yes, guys, nearly 700 wins in her career. But Coco came out fast. She would take the first set, showing just a little too much variety for the defensive powerhouse Caroline Wozniacki. But Caroline continued to fight, and the second set was a different story, a changing of the tides. Caroline showed her experience, and she took the second set 6-3 and most fans started to think, would this be an early exit for Coco? After making it to the quarterfinals last year, anything less than that would be a failure. But the third set, Coco showed why she's the future of tennis. Looking up at her coaches, they gave her the confidence to go take it. 6-1 multiple breaks in the third set. Caroline never had a chance and big game. Jimmy Butler was there on hand to cheer Coco. Coco ended the match winning 70% of her first serves, 54% of her second serves. She had seven breakpoint opportunities on Caroline and converted five of them. Backed up with five aces, she would storm into the quarterfinals, facing yet another Grand Slam champion. Dad wasn't worried as Coco stormed past Caroline in the third set. But the next matchup, a Grand Slam champion, back-to-back -back Slam champions, French Open champion Yelena Ostapenko, former world rank number five, recently beat Coco at the Australian Open, and most people thought this would be another quarterfinal exit for Coco. But it wasn't. And I don't have much to say about this match because it was that short. 20 minute first set, that's a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Coco Golf stormed out of the gates with heat seeking missiles and Yelena could not keep up. Too fast, too strong, too good. She destroyed the Grand Slam champion in straight sets, giving her a bagel in the first. Coco had seven breakpoint opportunities, cashed in on six of them, won 70% of her first serves, and she attacked 72% of Yelena's second serve, and she won 47% of her first serve. Yelena could barely get the ball in play. How about 38%? 
Coco stormed into the semifinals with a repeat of Cincinnati. Before the match, Coco talked about how grateful she was, how thankful she was to be in this position. She talked about her mental growth as a player and just learning to have fun on the court. But pressure is a privilege. And in this match, she showed you what she was made of. She came out too fast for Mukova and stormed to a 5-2 lead in the first set. She would have a couple more opportunities to close it out but Mukova would fight back. Seemed to be a breeze. There wasn't much Mukova could do to stop Coco. Well, except go to the forehand. After down 5-1, she went to the forehand and had success on the right side facing north. Yeah, I've been saying this for a long time. Attacking the forehand would stop the bleeding, but there was also a stoppage in play something about fossil fuels the crowd was enraged fans millions viewing worldwide didn't know what to do so coco decided to watch the football game hey it's football sunday why not plug it when play resumed mom was a little worried but coco would finish this in two and make her first u.s open final the ladies would shake at the net Jimmy was happy, the US Open fans were happy, and this would set up the biggest match of young Coco's career. The US Open Final. Sabalenka stormed out of the gate fast, getting the early break and everything was going her way. The world's number one and Australian Open champion was too aggressive. No one gave Coco a chance to win this match. Sitting as the favorite, Sabalenka was just one set away from becoming the US Open champion. But Coco started to fight. And she went to the short balls and Sabalenka had no answer. Then she started to play the lines and the unforced errors started to rack up. Then Sabalenka started to get frustrated. Ouch. The crowd got on its feet. Coco would win the second set, forcing a third and final winner take all. Coco won 50% of Sabalenka's second serves and it seemed like she had the momentum. Sabalenka would start to fade as she called for the physio and the inevitable seemed evident. And it was as time ran out on Sabalenka's dream of becoming this year's US Open champion. I want to thank my dad. He's the reason for all of this. Oh, and you can't forget God. And big ups to all my haters. Katie was happy. Well, sort of. Sabalenka wasn't. Coco would give an inspirational speech and Sabalenka had classy words as well to say about Coco. Remember, never give up on your dreams. Keep fighting. Coco did it, guys. Drop a heart for Coco, and thank you all for the love and support.